Scott Harrison, <coughs> and then Jenny Soon, and Luis Vega. Well, it's a long evening. Thank you, Mayor and Council Member, for staying awake because it's kind of going on and on again. Uh, my discussion is about 18A. Um, I'm having a problem with trying to become a sanctuary city. I don't know if you guys have looked up, but what I looked up about what's a sanctuary city, uh, they're defying federal law relative to various government agencies being required to assist the federal government with their illegal immigrants. In 1996, federal law was passed called Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act. It requires local governments to cooperate with the Department of Homeland Security. Um, you guys have this thing. It looks like it's to help children and stuff, but really we probably should be asking chief police about uh, how that's going to impact us financially because when you set up a place for uh, illegals uh, that aren't going to be reported by your police department in, in connection with ICE, uh, you're, you're inviting them. And recently, M Mr. Obama put about 50,000 of these folks who are convicted uh, felons back into society. Where are they going to go? They're going to go to places that uh, are going to be havens for them. There are some cities like Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., to name a few of these cities that are already on this list. And we're breaking a federal law. I don't understand how the, the leader of our nation is asking people to break the law. If you want the law to be changed, you go change it. Um, I'm, the, I'm a Zone 4 director for the plumbing, heating, cooling contractors. My, my passions are legislation and education. I'm involved nationally. I'm on the state board of plumbing, heating, cooling contractors, and also a local board on the president of the education committee. Um, because of those things, I am very invested in, in trying to help society. Uh, I just don't see how this is going to help perfect, protect my family. Uh, uh, we have our, our crime is up. We could use more police. The police don't need any help with more people to chase down or less communication with the federal government to actually get a hold of these folks. Um, sanctuary policies, officials, or otherwise result in safe havens for illegal aliens involved in a variety of criminal enterprises such as uh, illegal screams, uh, schemes less likely to be uncovered at its face and less risk, risk of deportation if caught by local law enforcement. Sanctuary policies provide an uh, environment to help for Latin American drug cartels, gangs, terrorist cells, since their activities are less likely to be detected and reported by law enforcement. Uh, in March, Saldana, the ICE director, drew heat from immigrant rights supporters appearing in a congressional hearing, endorsing efforts to rein in the sanctuary uh, movement. In a written testimony submitted to the House Oversight Government Reform Committee, Saldana said that the significant factor affecting efforts to deport undocumented immigrants has been the increase in state and local jurisdictions that are limiting their partnership or wholly refusing to cooperate with ICE immigration enforcement efforts. I just think it is irresponsible for us to take on such a move, and I would request that you consider this and strike this uh, idea of 18A away. Thank you very much. Jenny Sohn. City Council members, Mayor Bao Nguyen, I thank you so much for this opportunity, also for the courage to bring this up today as a resolution. I'm Jenny Sun. I'm the Interim Executive Director at the Korean Resource Center. We are a nonprofit organization combining direct services and advocacy to empower community and make social change. Since 2012, KRC has received over 7,000 calls from the API community requesting information regarding assistance for DACA, Deferred Action for Child Arrivals. We're not talking about sanctuary cities, we're talking about a legal program 
um, executed by our, the President of the United States. Um, since the implementation, our offices were able to assist 2,000 young people obtain, um, obtain their work permits, the ability to work, pay taxes, to drive, to, to carry out their dreams and their hopes. Now, upon the President's announcement in 2014 for administrative relief, hundreds of calls flooded into the Korean Resource Center once again. Parents of U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents and young people who were unable to benefit from the 2012 DACA finally felt some sort of relief. However, in February 2015, the program was halted due to lawsuits filed in the Fifth Circuit Courts. Now we are waiting. We are waiting for the Supreme Court to make a decision on this matter. In the meantime, our families, our youth, and community is simply told to wait. Politicians tell us to wait. Judges tell us to wait. But the community cannot wait because the time for change is now. We want our cities, our mayors, our council members to support immigrant youth and families. We want Garden Grove, a city where immigrants make up 75%, where diversity is its strength, to welcome and, and embrace immigrants. Esteemed council members, would you pass this res resolution today and show, you, show your support? Or will you also tell our community to wait? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Luis Vega. Good evening, uh, Major uh, City Council. Um, I'm here in support of uh, the Resolution 18A um, as an immigrant um, and as a citizenship prog program coordinator at O'Court, which is located in Garden Grove. Uh, we help and we encounter many immigrants that uh, need DACA and DAPA. Uh, as Jenny uh, said, uh, we're not talking about uh, sanctuary cities, we're just talking about uh, providing support uh, in this resolution. Uh, we're not asking for money. Uh, it's just a statement uh, in a sense to, to support DACA and DAPA so that way we can we can benefit as, a, uh, as uh, Orange County, as a city in Garden Grove. Uh, DACA will generate about 75 uh, million of uh, gross domestic product for California and will create about 9,500 new jobs. Uh, uh, there is about 500,000 uh, immigrants uh, living in Orange County. Uh, about 141,000 of them will benefit from DACA and DAPA. So this is good for Orange County and this is good for Garden Grove. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Daniela Soria. Daniela Soria. Okay. Laura Salas. Okay. Andres Rivera. And following that will be Glenn <coughs> Peterson. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Andres Rivera, and I've lived here in Garden Grove for 20 years, and I currently work in Garden Grove. And I myself, like a lot of you, or some of you here in the council, are all are immigrants yourselves. And I think we share a story. Um, I came, I'm originally from Colombia, and I came to this country because I was being persecuted in my country. Uh, we were going through a war. Um, and like I said, I think we share some of those, some of those same stories. Um, I was undocumented for 11 years, and I lived in fear. I don't know if you recall Prop 187 by Governor Pete Wilson in, in uh, 1994. I was 10 years old at that time. And I lived in fear because my mom would watch the news and every day she would listen on where folks were saying that they were gonna come knock at our door and they were gonna take her and me away. And my sister and, and my dad, who are legal, would, would, would stay here and we would be separated. And I was 10, living in fear. And I don't want this same um, fear to be in our community, to be in the community that I love, which is Garden Grove. So it's very important that we pass this, that you consider this resolution um, to make Garden Grove a welcoming and loving city. Um, I hope you, you support it and, and thank you. And one more thing. Um, no human being is illegal. Right. 
We heard today um, we had the chief of police, uh, the chief of uh, the fire department. When you refer to some something, something when you say the word illegal, you're referring to something, not a human being. When folks shoot out illegal fireworks, that's that's a something, not a human being. So to refer to a human being as illegal is it's just morally wrong. All right, I'm a human being. I'm a person. I'm a member of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, and staff. My name is Glenn Peterson. I'm the Office Director of World Relief Garden Grove. And um, can I be heard? I'm the uh, office director for World Relief Garden Grove, and World Relief has been in Garden Grove for 36 years. We've resettled more than 30,000 refugees in Garden Grove and Orange County uh, through, through our programs there. Some of your families may have been resettled by World Relief. Every place I go in, in Orange County, I, I meet people who, who tell me that. World Relief Garden Grove is recognized by the Board of Immigration Appeals and has six accredited representatives to represent immigrants in their path to um, legalization, normalization, and even citizenship. Since June of 2012, the first DACA program, or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, hundreds of young people in Garden Grove have benefited as they have been approved for work permits and social security numbers. This makes Garden Grove a safer place for everyone. The current Immigration and Naturalization Act prohibits people who have committed crimes of moral turpitude from benefiting from DACA or any other immigration benefit or relief. Um, the DACA recipients have been encouraged to work hard. It keeps families together. And among these recipients just in our office have included Vietnamese, Cambodian, Korean, and Mexican, and probably others. Last year, the president proposed an expansion to the DACA program to offer temporary deferment to certain parents of American citizens and legal residents through the Deferred Action for Parental Accountability, or DAPA. World Relief supports these expansions of DACA and the new DAPA program. This evening, I'm here to express support for a resolution by the Garden Grove City Council for expanded DACA and DAPA. It will reduce the likelihood of deportation that would separate hardworking immigrant families. The beneficiaries of DACA have already demonstrated that better jobs and employment status will increase pay and therefore tax revenues to Garden Grove in the state of California. Economic analysts have determined that it will generate $75.8 billion of gross domestic product for California and will create nearly 10,000 jobs. It could benefit up to 157,000 immigrants in Orange County alone if the, if the um, administrative relief were to be passed. So the city, the city of Garden Grove embraces diversity. It celebrates immigrants' contribution here in, in our community. DACA and DAPA is consistent uh, with, with that celebration. Um, I, I think it's important to note that the reason that the administrative relief hasn't moved forward is a political one rather than a legal one. The Fifth Circuit Court of, um, in Brownsville, Texas has put an injunction against it. And while you may have heard on the TV if you watch certain news channels that it's because of overreach of the president's authority, but it, it's frankly ridiculous because if you look at the list of things the president has authority to do, there are many other things that are more far-reaching than this. And the court did not cite presidential authority overreach. They cited the fact that they weren't given a community's opportunity to comment on this and that it might cost the state of Texas too much to issue driver's licenses. So they missed the point. They didn't watch the same news channels as some of the people in this room may be watching. The, the challenge here is that the, the, um, the legislature, the United States Congress, needs to hear from communities like this that we really do want comprehensive immigration reform, and this is one small step if the city council will pass a resolution indicating that 
administrative relief will benefit this city. Thank you. Martin Lopez, and then Glendana Shevlin. Good evening, uh, Mayor Nguyen and, and, and City Council members. My name is Martin Lopez, and I'm a resident, an Anaheim resident. I'm a union organizer with Unite here, Local 11. I just want to let you know that I live in Garden Grove for several years to the extent that I still come to worship uh, uh, my favorite uh, Catholic church in Garden Grove, which is St. Columban, St. Columban, a few um, couple of blocks away from here. So our union, Unite Here, represents over uh, about 20,000 members in Orange, Orange County and LA counties. Uh, many of our, thousands of our members are immigrants who work in the Disneyland Resort, and many of them actually live in Garden Grove. So tonight I'm here to let you know that our union fully supports um, DACA and DAPA, and I want to um, congratulate uh, Mayor Nguyen for um, proposing a resolu this resolution tonight and, and your courage. So we all know that deportations will separate and devastate hardworking families like uh, myself and the members that we represent. These are people that came to work hard, that do a very difficult job every day and don't cause any problems and they will bring uh, millions of dollars into the economy. They have family members, I have members, uh, uh, friends who are in this situation and I know they're really good people and they will bring a lot to this community. So, um, DACA and DAPA will enable, again, you know, many immigrant, immigrant families to pay taxes and fully participate in our economy. So how could this not be a good thing for Garden Grove? So I plead to all of you tonight to support the mayor and support us in uh, passing the DACA and, RAP and DAPA resolution tonight. Thank you for, your, uh, for listening. Thanks. Glendana? Shevlin. It's Glendana Shevlin. Oh, sorry, Glendana Yeah, Shevlin. that's okay. It's always pronounced wrong. <laughs> um, I want to thank you for letting me speak here. Um, again, it's Glendana. Um, I was a resident of Orange County just, uh, I mean, Garden Grove, um, eight months ago. I moved to Westminster. But prior to that, I lived in Orange County over uh, Garden Grove for 30 years. I'm also a member of Disneyland and a uh, very... Um, grateful member of Unite Here, and my brother and union sisters, right on. I must be the only white girl in this room that gets it. Um, you know what? We don't live next door to Smith and Jones anymore. It's Sanchez and Lopez. And I have to tell you, I, I'm, very, I'm really honored to be standing in front of this um, board here, and thank you for adopting this, this resolution, and I hope you will. Um, I still patron, um, come and dine and, and play because my family lives in Garden Grove. A lot of my family does. And one of my favorite waitresses and waiters work in Main Street, I'm not going to tell you where, have, have benefit from DAPA and DACA. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody for coming and sharing your thoughts, your feelings, information. We're going to move on with the agenda. I think at this point, I'm going to move forward. <clears throat> I'm going to move forward the, the two matters. Uh, I'm going to move forward first, 18A, since uh, you were the last speakers, but uh, let's do this adoption of the resolution supporting President Barack Obama's executive action on expanding deferred action for childhood arrivals and granting deferred action for parental accountability and urging other California cities to pass pro-immigrant resolutions as I requested. So colleagues, uh, thank you for your attention and thank you for considering this resolution. I, I do want to read the resolution to clarify uh, any kind of misunderstanding as to what this resolution is. This is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove, California, supporting President Barack Obama's executive action on expanding deferred action for childhood arrivals, DACA, and granting deferred action for parental accountability 
DAPA and urging other California cities to pass pro-immigrant resolutions. Whereas on November 20th, 2014, President Barack Obama issued a series of executive orders on immigration, expanding the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals and Deferred Action for Parental Accountability, programs that exercise the use of prosecutorial discretion to defer removal action for certain individuals who meet several guidelines, including having come to the United States as children or have U.S. citizen or legal permanent resident children for a period of time. The programs uplift the American values of keeping families together. Whereas several states, including California, have filed an amicus brief explaining why the president has the authority to grant deportation relief to undocumented immigrants and how the new policies will benefit states economically. Whereas over 30 U.S. mayors from across the country, including Los Angeles, and three other mayors in California have formed a coalition to sign an amicus brief in January 2015 in support of the president's executive orders. Whereas more than 70 city officials from across the country, including an additional five signers from cities, counties, and U.S. mayors in California joined an amicus brief in April 2015 to support the president's executive orders. Whereas over 141,000 individuals in Orange County, members of our communities, our neighbors, friends, and family are eligible for DAPA, DACA, and expanded DACA. Whereas of the estimated 3,034,000 undocumented immigrants residing in California, 1,523,000 are eligible for DAPA, DACA, and expanded DACA. Whereas if these eligible immigrants receive work permits and driver's licenses, unleashing their earning potential, it could lead to the growth of the United States economy cumulatively by $230 billion in 10 years and a $75.8 billion increase to its GDP over the next decade and the creation of 9,500 new jobs in California. Whereas Garden Grove exemplifies the values of diversity that recognizes the social, cultural, and economic contributions of our immigrant community, Whereas immigrants fill a necessary role in local economies and the presidential executive orders grant immediate relief to immigrant families in Garden Grove. And whereas we still urge Congress to pass federal legislative reform to fix our broken immigration system, but recognize that immediate relief through executive <coughs> action will benefit Garden Grove's families and economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Garden Grove as follows. Section 1, the City of Garden Grove will pledge its support to the effort implemented by the President's Executive Action on Immigration. Section 2, the Mayor or his designee is authorized to voice support, participate in brainstorm sessions, outreach plans, and execute such documents deemed necessary. Section 3, urge other mayors and city officials to sign on to any future amicus briefs and pass resolutions in support of President Barack Obama's executive action. That's the full resolution language. I do urge my colleagues to join with me to recognize those in our community. Personally, I'm an immigrant. My mom was eight months pregnant. I was inside her womb when she and my dad and some of my siblings escaped Vietnam in the middle of the night. And when I say escape, it was illegal to do so. They escaped Vietnam illegally. They did everything they could so that their unborn child could have a life that was better than theirs. 
they risked their lives. They risked separation. Two of my sisters were left behind. I didn't meet up with them until I was five. Growing up, I heard stories about them. That's how I came here. And when I think about the kids that I grew up with and, and the kids in our community whose parents risked everything, they left everything behind, everything familiar to them for a better future for their kids. And I know these kids. They've made my life better. They've opened up my ability to see things differently, to challenge what defines America. Who gets to define that? I think the greatest thing about our country is that each person is able to define that for themselves. And I want to keep that alive. I think immigrants aren't only something that we celebrate and we say we value diversity, but we really need to help these kids that would benefit from this program. This is not creating any kind of sanctuary city. This is something that went through a legal process that's being held up. And I want to get ahead of this and say, hey, we're ready. You're already here. Public safety is increased for everybody when immigrants are integrated into society. And for sure, when these kids and their families feel safer in Garden Grove, through these programs that give them a pathway to be recognized, they already wake up every day as Americans. I know they do. There's no doubt about that. But this will allow them to give back and help our community. Recently, I hosted a DACA DAPA clinic in partnership with the Asian American <coughs> Asian Americans uh, Advancing Justice and, and, and the uh, Orange County Asian American Bar Association and the Hispanic Bar Association. And these lawyers donated their time to help, and we hosted it at the Garden Grove United Methodist Church. And we were able to help about 30 different cases, and half of those were Vietnamese. This is not a Latino issue either. I want to make that very clear. We heard from the executive director of the Korean Resource Center that they've been receiving 17,000 calls just for DACA assistance, and they've already helped 2,000, and that this city is 75% immigrant. But the reality is, if we really remember where we came from, and we shouldn't forget, I think we all are immigrants <coughs> at some point or another. That's what this country is about. And we should keep that spirit alive. Amen. That's what makes this country better. So I, I want to bring this forward to say, hey, we're the city of youth and ambition. What else defines this country but our own city motto of youth and ambition? That's why I'm here. And that's why my parents risked their lives and the life of their unborn child to be here. And now I'm mayor of a city. I want to honor that. I want to honor where I came from by helping create and support these pathways for the future. So I urge you, colleagues, to join with me and support this resolution. It, it's nearly nothing binding. It costs nothing. But it says that we mean what we say. When we say we're a city of youth and ambition, we mean what we say when we say we value diversity. We mean what we say when we value the contributions of immigrants. We mean what we say when we know where we come from as immigrants. So I urge you to support this resolution, and I'm going to move it if there is no more discussion. Mr. Mayor, you said everything, and I definitely agree with everything that you said. And I, I agree with everything that is expressed as an immigrant. Um, the only caveat that I have is this. 
we are in the middle of a legal wrangle right now between the federal court and the federal government. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put Garden Grove in the middle of it. All right. So when I vote no on this resolution, it's not because I don't support what you said. I don't support DAPA. I personally support DAPA. But I don't think we as a council should be basically saying with one voice. Because perhaps if I don't want to speak out, out of line, but our council colleagues may have varying opinions on this issue. So they have basically one voice and trying to rope everybody into one uh, decision to make and put a resolution out, I think would be unfair for the council to make. So I want to let you know that if they come to the vote tonight, my vote will be no, but not for the reason that I don't support it. Mr. Fan, I, I, find, it, I find it difficult to uh, understand because you should vote with your heart, not what you think that someone else is going to vote first and foremost. And as an attorney, I, I would imagine that you would support our state. And our state has officially sent amicus briefs regarding the case. And, and so we're really not taking any particular kind of leadership here but like I said, we would be exemplifying what we say, and we would be walking the talk in our city. And this here has been brought forward, and we've heard from the speakers that have worked in our community for many years, like Mr. Glenn Peterson. Uh, and, and, and for yourself, having been a board member for St. Anselm Cross Cultural Center, assisting immigrants and helping people gain citizenship as well. I, I didn't have any citizenship because I was born in a refugee camp. When I was born, I possessed no citizenship whatsoever. It wasn't until I was 12, after both my parents naturalized, that I became a US citizen. And after that, I was so proud. <laughs> I actually wrote about it in high school, and now when there are citizenship uh, assistance in the community, I make time to volunteer for that. But to say that you're not going to vote because you think it's going to divide the council, I don't think that should be the vote. You should vote your heart, and the state has already supported this. Right. I'm, I didn't say that it would divide the council. I, can, I, I respect what each of the council members b believe, but at the same time, I think by us pushing the issue of having the full council vote, you're going to have basically either a 5-0 vote, 4-1 vote, or 3-2 vote. And you're going to scapegoat those who are going to be on the opposing side. This, to me, seems more like a political grandstanding than an actual statement to say that we support all of our, ci our citizens. Because, personally, we can support the, the issue. But I think for the whole member, for the whole board to come to agreement on this, I think it would be unfair for anybody else who may not be all on board, but for the fact that we're before the public right now, and if we don't vote the right way or the way that we should think that should be voted by the majority of the people here, then we may have some negative political fallout. Therefore, I believe that the best thing to, 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 to do is to either do this on a personal level, if you feel that it's necessary to voice your opinion, ink it, signal it, sign it on your own letterhead, but to ask for, for the full member to vote, I think, um, is not going to be successful. That's my personal stance. Mr. Chris Fan, I, I appreciate your sentiments. I see that they counter what you have proposed in the past regarding the Riverside letter. So I, I would bring back your compromise then and do have an official vote. And for those that vote yes, their signatures would be on the resolution. and and. This is not political grandstanding. You know my story. You know where I come from. This is personal. This is what defines me as an American. And this is what defines a lot of kids as an American. Mr. <laughs> Mayor, if I may if, jump in. In one second. And I would have to say that the Riverside issue that had ramifications on me. And you saw all that happen. I'm not out to get anybody. This is 
what I stand for. This is not political. This is about our families and this is about our kids. Mr. Bowie? Yes. Uh, before I express my uh, um, feeling and, and passion uh, about Im immigrants, uh, let me just uh, uh, you know, mention a couple of uh, notes. Uh, I do believe and I have seen uh, Councilman Fan uh, as a person of uh, high integrity. Uh, he had been uh, uh, out there uh, to support all immigrants. And I do believe he meant what he said, that uh, he's very concerned about uh, uh, you know the immig immigrant uh, issue, and he's in agreement with a lot of the uh, statement that the mayor have uh, summarized in this resolution. Uh, I'm saying that because I I want to make clear that uh, his vote or his his uh, the, uh, you know uh, action not to uh, uh, not to uh, you know agree with this resolution is because of his, uh, uh, you know, legal uh, uh, expertise that he doesn't want the city to be in the middle of, uh, of a uh, battle between the court and, and the president and Congress and, and whoever involved. Uh, and also he, uh, out of respect for the other uh, uh, member of this council, he doesn't want to force them into having to sign a letter that they may uh, personally uh, disagree with. And out of that, I really uh, admire uh, your stand and, and your um, uh, candid uh, uh, view uh, uh, in the public here. Now, uh, it's probably a, a good uh, uh, view for me to add in here because I believe uh, the three of us, uh, Mayor Nguyen, uh, Councilman Fan, and, and myself, is the uh, first generation uh, immigrants. We are like every other immigrant who came to this country uh, in the uh, recent uh, history. Let me recap of uh, what happened after 1975. Probably about three to four million people tried to escape Vietnam. Uh, millions uh, tried a dozen times. Many are caught and tried to escape again and caught again and escape again. Uh, some people uh, finally made it out uh, to a refugee camp and then eventually to the United States and, and now reside here in the USA. Uh, out of the two million that the uh, United Nations have uh, accounted uh, for, uh, at least uh, a million people die in the ocean, uh, in the vast ocean. They escape in a tiny uh, fishing boat. Uh, enough to carry about uh, 10 uh, people, but are crowded with about 100. Uh, the condition is as gruesome as uh, many uh, Latino people trying to cross the gruesome uh, desert in the heat, uh, barefoot, uh, trying to, uh, I mean, I'm not, uh, sorry, not barefoot, but, but on foot, to try to uh, find uh, freedom, trying to escape you know, oppression from their own country. Uh, the condition is very gruesome. You can see that a million people of Vietnamese, uh, Vietnamese people uh, die in the open sea. And so we have, we have and, and we face uh, the pirate who uh, sometimes uh, uh, throw the man overboard and rape the women. Uh, we face uh, a lot of uh, oppression when we finally landed in Thailand or Malaysia or Indonesia because those countries are afraid. If it is too easy for the Vietnamese to come uh, to their country, millions more will come and they will not have the resource and the capacity to, to take, care, take care of those refugees. And so I, I, I understand your, your, uh, your hardship and your, your, your heartfelt uh, for, for other immigrants. But I believe we are a nation uh, of law. Uh, I, do, I do agree with the other gentlemen that we don't want to uh, use the word illegal uh, immigrant because the word illegal 
uh, it's very cruel. It it have a it have a very bad meaning. But I I don't know if there's any other word to explain that uh, those immigrants that came here uh, that does not comply to the the law of the, of of this country. Uh, and, and I do not want to see the children being taken away uh, from their parents because the government uh, have to deport the parents. I, I don't like that at all. But I have a, I have a, 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 I'm not comfortable with signing this resolution, not because I, do, I am not sympathy with you. I do. And I, you know, wholeheartedly do not want to see any tragedy uh, you know, when parents and children have to be separated. Um, it, it's not easy for me to express this uh, without uh, making you understand uh, my view. Uh, and the other thing that I am uh, concerned with this resolution, the way it is written, uh, is number one. Uh, I uh, contrasting this to, the, uh, to a letter, not even a resolution, but just a simple letter, urging the city of Riverside to rethink uh, their sister relationship with uh, a city in Vietnam. The mayor at that time make it very clear that, you know, our city should never interfere with, with another city uh, business. And yet, here in this resolution, he is strongly urging other city to take the same uh, principle as Garden Grove. I do not know whether this is uh, you know, he ha having two standard uh, to conduct here, and, and that I uh, I hope that is not the case. But I, I am very disturbed by that. Let me finish first, Mayor. Sure. Um, secondly, I do not want to give the mayor full uh, authority to voice support, participate in brainstorm uh, session, and outreach plan, and execute such document as deem as he deem necessary. Our city is, is, is uh, you know, having a, a tight uh, uh, resources. We are having five to six million uh, deficit. And I do not want to allow the mayor to use uh, city resource as he deemed necessary. Because I think we, we, you know, I have a reservation about his judgment especially when a few uh, city council uh, meeting ago, he want to uh, spend about $30,000 for uh, his own personal aid. And, I, and, and, and therefore, I, I, I do not feel confident that I would want to, to give him that you know, level of uh, authority. Um, so, um, uh, and the you know, with that, uh, I would I hope that you understand that uh, uh, I do uh, support the immigrant because I am uh, from that experience as well. Uh, but it, this resolution, uh, I think the mayor uh, 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 considering is uncalling for, uh, and uh, and and he had been putting out a lot of resolution lately. You know, left and right. And uh, that's a very wasteful <laughs> for our city to, to, to sit in here and debate and considering that. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bowie, you know, the personal aid, I did pull it from, uh, we didn't take that to a vote. I saw and I heard from the people, we didn't want spending and I pulled it. So I hope that shows good judgment. Uh, however, on your point about the urging other California cities to support something, interfering in another city's business by telling them that they should break up with an existing relationship that they have is, seems like you're being a home wrecker. You're breaking up a relationship. But this is urging them to pass these resolutions. I, I do see those things as different we have the power to support national policy. We don't have the power to tell someone else what their local policy is. There is a big difference there, okay? Because I know that you did bring up before how I spoke at an immigration rally and, and, 
and you, you were not happy with that, that I was going out there sharing my story as an immigrant. The reality is when we're urging, no, that's not true. When, when we're urging groups like the U.S. Congress who represents us, that's within our authority. We're Americans. They represent us. When we're urging another city like Riverside, they don't represent us. So there's a big difference there, just to be clear. So I, 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 I hear your, your reservations regarding uh, the city resources. Mr. Man, uh, Mr. Roeder, would you please chime in? This is not going to cost the city a single penny. In fact, this is something that I'm passionate about, that I'm already out there helping folks like I did with the, with the clinic, the legal clinic at the Garden Grove United Methodist Church. Mr. Mayor, if I can, passage of the resolution is not a fiscal action. It does not affect the budget. This council's adopted the budget, set the limitations on council member expenditures. Anything beyond that would have to come back to the city council. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, may I remind yes, you may I remind you that the light and the air condition that we are using tonight is coming out of the city money. Okay. Uh, ab ab absolutely, Your Honor. Yes, sir. And so if we if 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 I give the please allow me to speak. So if I allow the mayor to uh, as it said in this resolution, the mayor or his designee is authorized to voice support, participate in brainstorm session, outreach plans, and execute such document he deem necessary. So all it take, if the mayor deem certain plans, certain actions, certain uh, you know project is necessary, this resolution will allow him to do it. Is it that correct? That is correct per the resolution. What I was simply attempting to clarify is that the mayor, by this resolution or any individual action, does not have the right or authority to commit funds on behalf of this council without your express authorization. Uh, that's and perhaps I'm not addressing or not understanding or addressing. Correct. You did not uh, address it because I am. I understand if he committed fund, uh, he would have you know any fund for any project would need the uh, council approval. Of course, I, I understand that. But if he uh, asks the staff, asks the city to uh, you know work on certain project, that would not necessarily need the city the council approval. That's correct. With, so, it, but it's still a, a, a cost to the city. If he if, if if he directs staff to to work on on project on plan that that he seem he deem necessary. That is correct. Okay. So I. I'd like to move this resolution, I'd like to bring it to a vote uh, at the very least. And I know that uh, Council Member Fan, you, you, know, you, you want to support something like this. I, I hope that you do vote yes and not voting no because some others would vote no. Uh, we have two other council members that haven't chimed in. Okay. I, I don't have a second for this motion. I'll say it clearly. Um, I think I, I don't believe this is the forum. I don't want to get involved. I don't want our city to weigh in on judicial matters. I think we, the courts will decide on this. Um, I do support, clearly I support, the comment that says in this resolution that Congress should pass federal legislation to, to reform to fix our broken immigration system. And with that, I think it's incumbent on them at that level and not the local level here to press for, um, for us at our level to, um, to take a stand on a judicial matter. So I, I, I don't think the, should, the city should weigh in on this matter. And with that, 
I don't think we should take an issue. I appreciate and understand your personal and your passion for this, Mr. Mayor, and you can do so going forward, and I, I commend you for doing that. But uh, for a city council, and we can see we have a difference of opinions, there's different political opinions on this throughout the nation. So I do not believe for us as a city we should move forward and in and, and weighing in on a judicial matter. So I won't be seconding this motion. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, I'd like to amend it then. Let's uh, take that final whereas and be it resolved. That would be the now therefore be it resolved that the city council of the city of Garden Grove urges Congress to pass federal legislative reform to fix our broken immigration system, but recognize that immediate relief through executive action will benefit Garden Grove's family and economy and strike the section one, two, and three from the previous therefore. So the last whereas would be urging Congress to pass comprehensive immigration reform. Could I get a second on that? I'll second that. Great, thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion received three yes votes with Councilmember Jones and Councilmember Fond voting no. Great, thank you colleagues. That was good work. So I'd like to have this uh, resolution uh, sent to our Orange County delegation for the members of Congress. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, everybody. We're going to move on here.